So thank you very much. My today's talk is on uh, new modalities of our uh, character control. And uh, congratulations, Anuj, uh, and all the uh, Dr. Kandi Chawla, Dr. Samarvan, uh, wonderful dedication. There's going to be a little overlap on uh, the slides uh, which I uh, uh, will try to avoid. So thank you, Dr. Uh, Ahmed, Dr. Vijayavali, and the whole team of for this PSG MIPSI symposia, which is, I think, postponed almost six months back, or even more than that, and we are waiting for this. Uh, this particular section has been uh, sponsored by no artists, so they have, have included some of the slides of uh, uh, insulin on this. I'm going to cover this talk on the, uh, the, some introductions. We'll talk on insulin and the importance of insulin analogs. And then the Indian data is trying to share the answer of uh, what you asked me for the doses. Before I proceed, I will uh, just take a revision of this that when you talk, do you have laser pointer? Yeah, if you have good. So now whenever you try to, uh, I'll try to have your focus here. Whenever you try to assess a case of diabetes in pregnancy, you have umbrella term which is called a hyperglycemia pregnancy, HIV, which is being divided into two. One is pure gestational diabetes, which, which is traditionally going to appear in second and the third trimester and will disappear after delivery. The other group is either pre-existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes becoming pregnant and some of the cases will be detected during pregnancy because they have never screened themselves earlier and they will also be categorized in TIP, that is diabetes in pregnancy. So when you talk about TIP, it has to be treated as pre-gestational diabetes, pre-existing diabetes, when you are talking about GDM, I think 70% of them they do very well only on diet and insulin may not be required in those patients. Only 30, 25 to 30% patients may require insulin. So your approach should change. It should not be mathematical that the person is behaving to you as pre-gestational diabetes tip and you are still giving two months, two weeks trial of, uh, of diet. That should not be. Assess the situation, NPMC had fasting prostitution, people had very rightly uh, unsaid, someone presenting with late pregnancy, don't wait for medical education therapy, straight away start the pharmacotherapy, whatever you choose. So we have medical education therapy, exercise, lifestyle modification, oral drug, insulin, and uh, I'll directly go to jump to insulin. So when to initiate insulin? ACOG says 95, 140, 2, 2 hour, 120. Uh, we should now stick to, Professor Cecilia said, we should stick to one figure. Rather than confusing people, most of us only follow fasting and 2 hour. Traditionally, for our type 1, type 2, IRDM, all other patients, intra-op, post-op, peri-op, we are following 2 hours. So, not to start another 1 hour criteria here, just stick to one. So, we say fasting and 2 hour. IDF also says 90 and 120. DIPC also says 90 and 120. And you should try to achieve this target. Those who, failed, those who fail to achieve the given treatment of MLT or oral drug insulin should be given. What does the government of India say? Wet formula insulin is the accepted therapy. Insulin can be started any time in the pregnancy. Insulin will be very important thing every time you remember when a person is sitting to you in front of you. Insulin does not cross the placenta. It's all the total that they are going to cross the placenta. They will survive up to 70 percent. 50 to 70 percent into cross. Metformin also causes almost an equal level of maternal and fetal level if you check is going to be equal. So all oral drugs will cross the placenta except insulin. Insulin bodies used to, insulin antibody used to try across the placenta, but the human insulin which we are using, or analogs we are using, the insulin antibodies formed from this insulin. To very small extent it across the placenta, but they are of very, very safe levels. And that is why the safest drug is insulin, and that is why I'm just repeatedly saying insulin depends on drug of choice. There are some absolute indications for insulin. High BLC, ketonuria, you have a, a renal dysfunction, hepatic dysfunction, obstetric hepatic microsomia, IUGR, adrenomias, polyadrenomias, participation uh, uh, on, on steroids, or uh, you know, brittle diabetes. Circulation, you should not uh, wait for the metformin. Some, some non obese lady coming to me with the BMI of say 20 or 21, and not unnecessarily go for metformin. Then we have not tolerated also all these cases, insulin is a drug of choice. Which insulin is safe? We have the regular insulin, as part of the risk of the analogs, and vitamin is a long acting insulin, which is the only analog which is approved, and the NPH insulin, these are the insulin which are approved. 
faster in the LPS part, but ultra fast in, 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 in uh, game, so it is also approved and it covers post printing better than the uh, other S part insulin. Insulin, about insulin analogs, what are the recommendations? ACV says insulin analogs have been used in pregnancy and do not have a recommendation. ITF also says premixed insulin also safe if you are using it. NICE also says as part in this book. Dipsy also said human insulin is, is, is most cost effective in our country, least human energy, including aspart and dispro, and they are safe and effective. Now we talk about basal, basal insulin analogs. We have a data of Ectimir versus NPH, both of them approved, and there are comparative data about the insulin antibodies, and what they say, Ectimir is considered as a basal insulin of choice in gestational diabetes, though it is much more positive than NPH, but it covers the fasting that goes wonderfully well. But when you talk about the gestational diabetes, we have, I mean specifically in the, in the, in the second, uh, second trimester, third trimester, in that situation, they will present to you with normal fasting and lower than normal fasting than the pre-pregnancy for fasting and the post-pregnancy hyperglycemia. So if it is easier, it will be post-pregnancy hyperglycemia. So you will need bonus insulin rather than two or three times of bonus insulin rather than the previous insulin which has a long-acting component also. So when you give previous insulin or a long-acting insulin in your gestational diabetes, there is always a risk of fracture and hypoglycemia and you should avoid doing that. This is a data at PLC comparable with insulin. When you use in, whenever you, any, any new drug comes, any new application comes, then uh, you have to have a comparative data with the pre existing safe drug, and it has comparatively uh, has shown to be safer, rather better than even NTH when it comes to good glycemic control, less glycemic variability, better fasting uh, fasting and the PLC targets. Rapid analogs, uh, uh, there is another trial which is a, a landmark trial. Where insulin S part versus insulin, regular insulin was, was again evaluated, and they have also come out with the data S part versus S part and NPH versus human regular insulin versus an NPH combination. And S part is a regular insulin again has shown classical better post prandial control versus the NPH, and that there is no uh, the risk of hypoglycemia also found to be much less in S compared to the uh, the the, 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 uh, the regular insulin. Uh, compared to the S part insulin, and this is again the insulin S part to a better post prandial control uh, as, uh, because it has a more physiological action profile. Hypoglycemic episodes are also found to be lesser in insulin S part versus the human regular insulin. Major hypoglycemic episodes are again found to be much less in the S part group versus the human insulin. Outcomes are very, very comparable between the two uh, outcomes in pregnancy with type 1 diabetes, they are randomized and they found the hypoglycemia are less, preterm delivery are less, malformations are less, and fetal losses are less. Even in our own data, which possibly a clinic journal was not relevant remembering that particular paper of pre-gestational diabetes, we have, we have given a, a chart there. Uh, the regular insulin versus the uh, versus the S part insulin use, the, the, the microsomia was much less in the in the S part group versus the regular insulin. Perinatal outcome is all comparable between between the two. Perinatal malformation nil. No evidence of to suggest that insulin crosses the placenta. Twenty bodies formation were also found to be much less. A comparison of the efficacy of insulin as part and, and regular insulin for managing the uh, gestational diabetes and the uh, fetal outcome. If you see, on, on, on my, I'm sorry, I don't have the, uh, the laser pointer, but the fasting blood glucose was better, 2 over blood glucose was better, better. Insulin doses requirement of S part were lesser versus the regular insulin. Hypoglycemia risk was much less. Hospital, uh, uh, length of the hospital stay was less, and into the length of the insulin take a weeks. A requirement were also significantly less than when you use S part insulin. Now you have another insulin which is called as uh, insulin uh, uh, faster PS, which is a, a faster insulin S part, and this has been made by addition of the two molecules that is niacinamide, which is absorption modifier, modifier uh, and, and l arginine which is added to the for the stability. And, the, and, and both of them did not alter the properties of the S part insulin. So it, can, it gives a better absorption. And this insulin can be taken. If you use S part regular insulin, you have to give it 20 to 30 minutes before the Someone obey is ready coming to you, you have to give 40 to 50 minutes. Morbidly obey, you have to give one hour before the 
When you give the start insulin, you have to give it 5 to 10 minutes before the meal or sometimes even after the meal. But when it is less insulin, you have to take just before the meal and you can even give after 10 to 10 minutes of the meals also without affecting the normal kinetics of the molecule. So diabetes and, and, and glucose metabolism uh, as far as faster acting insulin is concerned, there is more data in gestational diabetes, 37 pregnancies and they are found to be safe. Let me take you to some Indian data which I have promised you and this is about insulin therapy in type 2 diabetes, pre-gestational diabetes, possibly the only data in the last so many decades. We have some figures and numbers to understand in type 2 diabetes, pre-gestational diabetes, around 100, 101 pregnancies and the first trimester these women with type 2 diabetes required around 0.5 mg the body weight of their pre pregnancy weight. While the, as the pregnancy advances, insulin doses went up, which went up to around 0.8 unit per kg body weight. So, around one and a half time of the original dose when we started in the first trimester, when they, she did not have insulin resistance. But insulin resistance has increased the dose to one and a half time. If you go to the Western figure, it will also say you 1.5 to 2 times. Twice if the dose goes up to twice the dose of the first uh, uh, trimester. So gestational glucose intolerance, when you diagnose the patient between 1.2 to 1.40, the requirement in the first trimester, at the time of diagnosis, not first trimester, at the time of diagnosis, in GTL will be around 0.5 minute, those are requiring insulin. Gestational diabetes at age, 70% will not require, 30% those are requiring is requiring 0.25 minute per kg body weight. And pre-gestational type 2 diabetes in India will require around 0.5 minute per kg body weight. At the time of full term, they will require 0 0.15, 0 0.4 and 0.8 and all the figures are saying that Indian population is required around 1.5 times the dose increases from 1 to 1.5 times at the time of delivery. Insulin in twin pregnancy, there is a paper which has stimulated me and a few more colleagues like here, uh, sitting Dr. Anand Maheshwari and many other people have discussed that did you see in twin pregnancy, they said that we have seen few of them, did you see that they require higher dose, double the dose of the single pill? No one agreed. So we had to have to come up with evidence because this data says type 1 diabetes in US requiring double the dose versus single term. So we have done a data of collaborative with Dr. Sanjay Gupta, which is a very, very senior colleague from your colleague from Pune, and around 40, 40 pregnancies or so, and we have come up with the data that GDM women with twin or single term gestation differed insignificantly in the treatment strategies and insulin doses. Insulin requirement need not be proportionate to the number of fetuses. And treatment should be planned to achieve a glycemic control, don't count numbers here. Insulin dose has to be utilized on the basis of home monitoring of blood glucose and may not always be applicable to all the women. At the time of intrapartum, you should try to match keep blood glucose between 70 to 120. If it is high, it will go into the fetal circulation. Fetus will be in hyperinsulinic state because of the hyperglycemia of the mother. The moment you cut the placenta, there is high chances of having neonatal hypoglycemia. So hyperglycemia in intrapartum is going to precipitate the neonatal hypoglycemia at the time of birth. Some of the patients with type 1 diabetes, type all type 1 diabetes, few of the type 2 diabetes, and very few of the GDM women may require intrapartum uh, insulin infusion to achieve a good glycemic control. Most of the GDM may not require insulin at the time of labor or seizure. There is always a question mark from some of the gynecologists, and Amit has come and occurred here on, in, on, in my ears. So, sir, sir, please also talk about the insulin injection technique. Because our, our gynecologists always have a fear of using insulin in the abdomen. So let us come to the data and real evidence based discussion. I just added this slide. First, I step, no change in the insulin site or the technique is needed. First, I step. Second, I step, the lateral part of the abdomen can be used to inject the insulin staying away from the, uh, from the skin overwhelming the fetus. Third trimester, insulin can be injected in the lateral part of the abdomen while ensuring the skin fold is properly raised. So whenever you take insulin, you can certainly take insulin in the abdomen throughout the pregnancy. So don't have any keep any figure, uh, sorry, clear. And but or if you still have phobia, and patients with relatives have a phobia, then alternate sides like thigh, upper abdomen, upper arm, and buttocks are also can be used, and you can appreciate the figure on, on the right that uh, where it can inject the insulin. <coughs> Postpartum, 15% GDM will remain glucose intolerant after delivery. 
और आप अवेलेबिलिटी और मेडिकल एजुकेशन करेंगे That your target from 90, 120 will go up now to 120 to 160, 170, like you have in in normal uh, non-treatment state. Uh, but many of them may require only medical intervention therapy, especially for 72 hours. And after 72, because when you when you keep aggressive intensive control diagnosis with pregnancy with high doses of or whatever amount of insulin you're giving, you will take the beta cell take rest, and these beta cells secrete good amount of insulin even up to a week period. So first 72 hours. Possibly you may not require any insulin. Then the blood glucose may start going up, and you may need some form of therapy. Insulin is the drug of choice, even in the lactation. 30 to 70 percent of diabetes will become severe in subsequent pregnancy. 10 to 15 percent type two diabetes within five years are going to develop. So six rule of six has been already told to you. I'm not repeating. I just tell you that please encourage the breastfeeding there is exist and inverse association between the duration of breastfeeding versus the type two diabetes risk among the parents women. So longer is the breastfeeding, higher is the chances that the mother is protected from developing diabetes and metabolic syndrome. And then we have another data which is coming at two days postpartum compared to four to twelve weeks of postpartum. Blood uh, glucose monitoring, and they have found that it is almost as sensitive and specific if you do it within two hours after the delivery, that is 48 hours after delivery, because once the lady goes back to their room or home, they never come back for the OTP. So final slide is that the glycemic control can be maximized to the extent that the fetus no longer recognizes that his mother has diabetes, and the treatment of mother during pregnancy may be the first step in the prevention of obesity and diabetes in offspring. Of, and, and of the diabetic mother, and that is what is primary prevention. We are talking since morning. Eat, just say, "Bache do jaan." So always protect the mother as well as child. Pregnancy with diabetes is associated with increased risk of maternal fetal complications. Guidelines recommend that good optimal glycemic control can prevent the risk of maternal fetal complications. Insulin remains the mainstay of the treatment, uh, as everyone says, but sometimes it can be used uh, over time. Tenth of month, never forget this. This birthday of Professor Shivam is being celebrated as, as a as a national human day, and India is the only lucky country to have this day. No other country is having such uh, recognized day for 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 the awareness. So do some work like you are doing for diabetes day tomorrow and today. You are done a walkathon. I feel on 10th of March and 12th month of March. A gypsy organizes meeting across the country. You also are required to do a smaller day or smaller delivery. You can do it. Thank you very much. And this is one of the paper talk which already has been referred by uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ranjit Chawla. That we have done public awareness program, which you can also do. We have done practically. We have 22 languages in Indian constitution, and we have completed 21 languages uh, of the Indian constitution, including uh, or including the Kashmiri, uh, which is called as uh, uh, what is it? Urdu. Uh, and then we have done Kokri, Sindhi, Punjabi. Everything we have done, sir. And uh, we are happy to do that. We have started the second cycle. Of almost 30 programs are over. 30 CMEs are over in various states. Every which is doing that wonderfully well. Now we are, I have taken the handover from uh, Dr. Rajiv Chawla. Now we have given this uh, my my doctor Hema Dimaka, which is from the from your faculty, and uh, hopefully we will continue to progress in doing this work. GDM to type two diabetes is an opportunity. Never miss this. Before I stop. Let me take this opportunity to uh, wish you a happy World Diabetes Day. Merry Christmas. Let us all pray that every person with diabetes who is in, in touch with you or in medical care should remain happy and healthy throughout. Happy New Year for 2023 in advance. Always, always, always try to celebrate your birthday by not cutting the cake but cutting the fruit. So start on another campaign at home at Kelly. Cut the fruit and not the cake. Thank you very much for this.